Hello YouTube and welcome to Medicine with Magid. I am a second year medical student and I'm preparing for my boards which I have in about a month and a half. Naturally I'm pretty worried about it so I'll be making videos on here as a way for myself to help understand and solidify some of the ideas and concepts that I'm struggling with. Hopefully this might be helpful to somebody else. If it isn't, that's okay. If it is, that's great. So without further ado, let's begin. Today we're going to be talking about viscerosomatic reflexes. So the easiest way to remember where all the viscerosomatic reflexes are is by making a chart. Now you can find this chart all over YouTube. I didn't come up with it. I just made a couple additions to it. Uh, so we're gonna need a sharpie or a pen and this notepad and we'll show you how to make it. First thing you're gonna do is you're gonna make 14 lines. We want to label them, right? So the first thing that we'll get at the top is T1 through T4, T1 through T5, T2, skip one, down to T7, T2 to T8, and lastly T5 through 9. T5 through 9. So I'm going to talk about what it all means in just a bit in just a minute after we finish drawing the lines. On the bottom, we're going to draw this. Now following this, these same five columns, we're going to start with T10 to T11, and then from T12 to L2. The next column, we're going to go from T11. We're going to draw three in a row, T11 to L2 with no T10. And we're going to do that three times. And then again T10 to T11 and then T12. Nope, you can't see any of that to L2. So I dropped this a little bit but we did uh, T10 to T11 like this. T11 to L2 three times then just so it's very symmetrical right here. Now to label this, what all of this means. This first one, T1 through T4. This head, so like all of the head, all the head stuff. Okay. Now, next is the heart. I'm gonna draw a heart right there. Right. So the lungs are right here. Now this slightly longer column than the lumps. And draw an arrow to that. This is our lower, this is our, sorry, our upper extremity and the esophagus. And, and right at the end, we have upper GI. Great. Now at the bottom, as we'll start, now we'll start going, we'll go right to left. We have our middle GI and a lower GI. Cool. So you see, that's how you can see the levels. And you're going to have to remember this chart, but it's fairly symmetrical. And the tops and bottoms sort of correlate to each other, especially with the GI. Uh, below lower extremity and esophagus, or upper extremity and esophagus, we'll label this lower extremity and erectile tissue. Upper extremity and lower extremity have an easy correlation to understand, and I won't tell you what the association is between the esophagus and erectile tissues. You can figure that out for yourselves. From the lungs, we have, um, this is, doesn't quite make sense, but this will be the bladder. So this section is the bladder right here. And next to it, the heart, we'll use the, the prostate. It all has the same distribution. 
And finally, now this bit right here, T10 to T11, is going to be upper GU. So, you know, like kidneys and stuff. And lower GU. Like the urethra, you get the idea. Cool thing about this chart is that all of the bits that touch the bottom, so lower GU, prostate, bladder, lower extremity, lower GI. These guys, I'm going to draw a little X's here. These are also all of the organs that have sacral parasympathetic output. Everything else, when you're talking about parasympathetics, not sympathetics, is going to be from OA, C1, C2 region. You also want to circle C10 and C12. C12 is important because that's where you're going to feel the appendix. Tip of the 12th rib on the right for an appendix reflex. C10 is where the adrenal viscerosomatic reflex will be. Those are just two more things you're going to have to remember. And you can label that on your own chart. One last thing. If you look at the, uh, at the GI section, one thing to know. For upper GI, we're getting innervation from the celiac ganglion via the great splanchnic nerve. Middle GI, we're getting innervation from the superior mesenteric ganglion via the lesser splanchnic nerve. And the, low, and the lower GI, we're talking inferior mesenteric ganglion via the least splanchnic nerve. And that's obviously for the parasympathetic reflexes. This has been Medicine with Maggot. Hope you learned something. I think I've memorized something. So it's all good.